So hello, I'm Johnny, this is Bork, and today I'll be talking about all of the smoke and emissions going up into the atmosphere, but probably not the smoke and emissions that you're expecting. Uh, I'll actually be talking about the effects of cigarettes and people that smoke weed. <laughs> Where do cigarettes come from? You know, uh, originally they come from a plant, uh, so they are natural in that sense, but a lot happens uh, further down the production line. But they're grown as a plant, which is the tobacco plant or the nicotiana plant, uh, and they grow that all around the world, but in lots of countries, including China, Brazil, the US. As we all know, uh, growing plants and crops, uh, we hear about it all the time with uh, you know, deforestation, where they're cutting down massive parts of the forest all around the world. Uh, to grow crops and grow cattle and so on. But obviously tobacco is a plant, so they need space to grow it. An estimated 1.5 billion hectares of trees could have actually been cut down for tobacco use since the 1970s to actually make these massive tobacco fields. Uh, and that's, you know, that's destroying a massive carbon sink there, especially in places like Brazil, where you might have the Amazon rainforest. They're cutting down all of these trees. Those trees would otherwise be converting carbon dioxide to oxygen, but by cutting them down, you're stopping that from happening. Uh, and then obviously when you actually have these empty fields and you're growing the tobacco, a lot of plants don't really grow that well by themselves, just in nature. So farmers cover these fields in pesticides as well. Uh, which sink into the ground. Lots of the pesticides are actually pretty emissions intensive to make, which lots of people forget about. Uh, so these chemicals, this massive kind of chemical process is very involved in producing tobacco. Uh, so just growing the plants has a massive, massive environmental impact, even before you burn anything. And there's other aspects as well. It's not just about the actual farming practices of it, but when I was saying they cut these leaves off the trees and then turn them from the green leaves that you might imagine into the brown stuff that's actually in your cigarettes, uh, it needs to be cured, the tobacco leaf. So in the curing process, you'd imagine there's maybe some high-tech sustainable way to do it, but there's not. Uh, they actually just get a massive amount of wood and instead of putting it in the airing cupboard or something, they get all this wood and they just set fire to it basically with the tobacco ab leaves strung above uh, and that dries out the leaves but there's a massive massive amount of smoke that comes up from the wood that they're burning there. So the amount of wood they actually use just to cure the tobacco totals around 11.4 million metric tons every year. Uh, that's a pretty hard number to imagine what that is. Uh, I've got no idea myself so I looked it up and that's actually double the weight in wood of uh, the largest pyramid in Egypt. So that's a pretty crazy amount of wood they're just burning every year to dry that out. After we've got the leaves and they've been cured uh, by these massive wood ovens obviously the, the cigarettes actually need to be made and processed themselves. So we don't really know how this is done in very much detail because a lot of cigarette companies around the world like to keep their uh, delicious recipe under close wraps so they don't want everyone copying their big formula. Uh, but you can assume pretty safely that electricity is involved at some stage of the manufacturing process uh, you know, to light the factories, to power the machines that roll the cigarettes and grind it up and package them and everything like that. So you know, obviously we have you know, manufacturing uses a vast amount of electricity and it's in all sectors and industries. Uh, but yeah, that also plays into the cigarette side of things. And the water use is absolutely massive as well. To water these fields takes huge amounts of water uh, that, aren't that isn't necessarily easily found in these regions either. Uh, so some of these regions are kind of water scarce. Uh, there's villages nearby that could potentially use from a, a good access to clean water. But instead, millions and millions of litres every year are being pumped over these fields. And they're washing the pesticides into local, local watercourses as well. But of course, uh, if they're making cigarettes in the Amazon, uh, then how do they get them to your corner shop in Muswell Hill? So everything's got to be transported from people carrying them. Uh, to cars, to lorries, to boats, to planes, transporting millions and millions and millions of cigarettes around the world every year. Uh, and as we all know, emissions uh, from car exhausts and lorry exhausts, uh, shipping and aviation are absolutely massive. So we've, uh, they're, they're just adding another stage, another level of emissions onto the whole cigarette producing process because you've got to take them to the customer at the end of the day uh, so they can be smoked. Uh, and in the process, you're creating a lot of smoke just from the travel that's going up in the air. So, 
What is cannabis? I've got no idea, personally, but I asked some of my friends here at Bork and they filled me in with some information. Uh, so yeah, so I found out a little bit about this strange plant. Much like tobacco, uh, weed actually comes from a plant, as you might have guessed from the name, weed. But the plant's pretty different to the tobacco plants. So the ones people use to actually grow marijuana are the female, uh, the female plants, uh, because they have the good buds and the good flowers that have the THC on them, uh, which is the good stuff that gets you high, I've heard people say. So it's illegal in the UK at the moment, but it's recently been allowed to be used for medicinal purposes. Uh, so unlike cigarettes, people, scientists and doctors, uh, some of them certainly do believe that it can actually have health benefits of some kind. So unlike the tobacco plant, which has one use, uh, not a particularly useful one in my opinion, but that is to grow, you know, the tobacco plant is only used to uh, produce the leaves and then those are harvested and turned into cigarettes. But the marijuana plant actually has a much wider uh, array of purposes. So the first one of those obviously uh, you know about, that's cutting the flowers and the buds off the plant uh, and turning those into the drug, marijuana, which can be used recreationally or medicinally. Uh, so already that's got two uses, uh, and then there's lots of other uses. The plant itself can be kind of chopped up and mushed up and turned into hemp which can be used for a variety of things. So it can be used to bulk up chocolate, I've seen before, uh, and you can use it to, as a sustainable alternative to cotton, which is very emissions intensive in itself. Um, so yeah, you can use it for those things, and obviously you can, you can mash the seeds up, turn them into oil for like wonderful massage oils that I love using personally. Uh, when you really need to unwind after a hard day balking. And uh, also you can create these seeds, you can take the seeds from the plant and feed them to parrots. So massage oils, feeding them to parrots, what more could you ask from this plant? So everyone loves drugs, but no one likes drug dealers. So there's an obvious solution to this, which is grow your own marijuana in your loft. Uh, which is a great idea, but there's only one problem, which is it uses a massive amount of electricity. Uh, so actually the way most people get caught when they have a few plants growing in their loft or their garage or their shed or whatever is because you need lights running pretty much the whole time uh, which provide light for the plant so it can photosynthesize, big word, and uh, also it provides a lot of heat so it provides this atmosphere that the plant likes to grow in. So a lot of energy is actually needed to create the right environment for a marijuana plant to grow. So you also need to buy, uh, you need to buy your vents which are quite expensive, uh, you, can buy, you need to buy air filters, you can just get, use the same ones off your old fishing tank, it, I've tried it, it's fine. Uh, so you can clean the air, you need to be cleaning the air, that uses lots of energy. Uh, the temperature needs to be carefully regulated, there needs to be light all the time. Uh, the plants need space, so you need lots of room in your house. Uh, so there's, this sounds like a how to grow your own marijuana plant, but it's not. Uh, I'm just telling you that you know, the plants use a lot of electricity to grow, uh, even on a small scale. So of course, uh, not all of the weed people are smoking uh, is grown in people's back gardens or attics. So at these massive grow operations, they actually grow in, in America and so on, and Canada and other places. They actually grow the plants in massive greenhouses, uh, which is, you know, that uses a massive amount of energy, uh, much in the same way as a greenhouse that would be growing tomatoes or something like that. It's got massive electricity consumption, water consumption and so on. So there is that environmental impact there. It does have a big, uh, a big footprint. So like I said, where tobacco was burning pyramid-sized piles of wood uh, to dry out the leaves, uh, once you know the the plants, the marijuana plants have been stripped and all the leaves have been taken off the stems and stalks, as Snoop Dogg would say, uh, the, you can just dry it out pretty normally by leaving it in a dry place. So I think it takes about seven days to two weeks uh, for you know one of these big farms to actually dry their stuff out. But then it's not over a fire, it's not over any electric heaters or anything like that. I'm pretty sure it's just a dry, well insulated room. Uh, you know, where they just leave the stuff hanging up and it all dries out. Uh, but I've heard from reliable sources you can just stick it under your bed and it also dries out fine there. But then of course after it has been dried out uh, it needs to be sent out to, to the consumers, much like cigarettes. But you know, maybe instead of going in an articulated lorry uh, from a warehouse to a Sainsbury's, it's more likely to be delivered to you in like, a, I don't know, a Vauxhall Corsa from 2007 uh, instead. But, you know, of course it has transport emissions, things that, f between processing and consumption, uh, you know, things have to get to the consumer. So I think smoking seems worse for the environment, purely because the plant is more delicate, so it actually involves way more water, way more pesticides, more energy and more water, 
uh, and it results in a lot of deforestation. So I think that's the main reason why the actual tobacco crop is really bad uh, compared to the marijuana plant, which is, you know, it still uses energy and water, but it's a lot hardier and it kind of wards off uh, bugs and animals from eating it by itself. So it requires a lot less human intervention and because of that, a lot less carbon emissions are created as a result. So I think in terms of the plants themselves, uh, that's a point to marijuana there for being more sustainable. Okay, so that's that for Bork this time. Uh, we're going to have to call it a win to cannabis, marijuana, weed, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it seems to be more sustainable than cigarettes. If you disagree, please get at us in the comments and let us know. Uh, and of course, I cannot advocate doing either of these substances. Uh, I've never tried either myself. You know, I'm a good boy. Uh, so if you know, let me know your experiences and your opinions on the sustainability uh, credentials of both. And have a good day. Tune in next time to get balked. Okay, before you pick the bong up, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Thank you.